Hi, and welcome to In This Tent We Obey Conservation Laws. I'm Noam Berenstein, and I'm a physicist who takes flying trapeze lessons at TSNY in Washington, D.C., which you can see in the picture here on the bottom left corner. As you might expect if you know any physicists, I've been thinking about the physics of flying trapeze for a while, and recently I was asked whether I could present something about that topic, so I put together these videos. I'm going to show you some things about the physics of flying trapeze. I've talked about how out-of-shape 40-year-olds do tricks and how better flyers gain or at least not lose any height during their swing in the previous couple of videos, and in this part, part 3, I'm going to talk about how flyers flip while falling like a cat. So the name of this maneuver is called the miss, and I'll tell you why in a second. So landing in the net is more comfortable and also safer if you do it face up, back to the net. But most tricks end up face down for easier catching. So the miss is the name for flipping over after doing a trick, in principle after missing a catch, although people do it mostly when they're practicing tricks with no catcher, and flipping over before hitting the net. So first, let's start with an example that Rex at TSNYDC was nice enough to let me record. It's a little hard to figure out how this is possible. It really seems like it violates conservation of angular momentum or something. How do you turn yourself around in midair without pushing on anything? And no, the flyers don't do it by pushing against the bar as they're letting go. So the answer must be no, it doesn't violate conservation of angular momentum, but why not? And just as a personal aside, I found learning to do the miss to be quite difficult. You know, maybe just because in some sense I knew that it seemed impossible. But an important part of that is that the available time to do it is rather short. And you can do a little tiny physics problem to figure out approximately how long that is, because it seems to go by so fast. Your height starting from the board, which is about the height you are when you're finishing your trick, is 23 feet. The net is about 9 feet high. So the difference between those two is about 4.2 meters. And if you set that equal to 1 half gt squared, the time it takes gravity to accelerate you down to the net, that leaves you with about 0.9 seconds. That's not very much time, and actually if you consider the fact that before you start doing the miss, before you start flipping over, you have to finish the trick, let go with your hands from the bar and present them to the catcher, you actually have even less time to do this. It's hard to think while falling, and it's also hard to see what's going on if you're watching somebody else do it because it goes by so fast. And the instructions you get are not very physics-y, they're things like just turn, or turn from the hips, or maybe drive down with your shoulder, or swing your arms from overhead down to the core and then reach to the ceiling. And it's hard to figure out how these things map to anything that makes sense physically, from a physics point of view. So as you noticed from the first video, the mist goes by pretty fast, so let's watch it again in slow motion before I start going into the details. I should also probably point out that what Rex is doing isn't exactly the classic mist motion, so it doesn't quite map to the explanation in the next few slides, but I thought it was useful to see it regardless. So if you search around for how to rotate while falling, or how to rotate in microgravity, or how do astronauts flip over, or how do cats flip over, you sort of get two models of how this can be done, which I call the arm-waving model and the cat, or hula hoop model. Unfortunately, I don't have a really good video, but it's clear that arm rotations can be used to change orientation. There's a link here to a video about how astronauts turn in space, where this is sort of being done right after about 55 seconds into the video. But it's not really clear what's happening, what exactly the astronaut is doing with his body. Unfortunately, there is a better version out there. I've seen it in a talk, but I don't have access to it. In the interest of time, I'm not going to talk anymore about the arm waving. I'll go right on to the hula hoop model. But I'll try to explain at the end why I think they're actually equivalent. Now, there's another model for rotating while falling, which I'm going to call the hula hoop model. And that's basically what cats do. There's a very nice YouTube video that I have the link for right here. And I'm going to talk about how, uh, try to explain how it works slowly and uh, in the context of trapeze. If you look at what a hula hoop motion is when you're standing with your feet down, you push the hips back, then off to the side, say the right side, then hips forward, and then hips to the other side, the left side. So you move your hips in a circle. And I've painted the back of the flyer here in pink, the front in blue. And so now we're going to take a top view, and from the top view, what it looks like is the flyer starts facing forward, that's number one, and you can see the back of their shirt. Then in number two, their head is to the left, their hips are to the right. Number three, their head is back, you can see the front of their shirt. 
and number four, the head is to the right, the hips are to the left. And if you stare at this for a while, you can convince yourself that this is equivalent to a superposition of two motions. There's a rotation of the torso in a circle, just normally rotating around what it would be a vertical axis from the frame of reference where the flyer is standing up. The one that's pictured above, you can see the arrow indicating the axis. But that's not enough. If you just did that, you would only really see the back of the shirt. So you have to superpose on that the twist of the body clockwise as you're viewing them from above. And the combination of those two rotations is equivalent to the hula hoop motion. And those two rotations have moments of inertia and rotational speeds and angular momenta associated with them. The moments of inertia are capital I, the angular velocities are omegas, and the resulting angular momenta are the L's. And there are about two different axes. The first one, the rotation of the whole torso, is around what is a vertical axis in this uh, reference frame. And the rotation and the twisting of the body is around this axis indicated by an arrow in this reference frame. And so if we think about all of the different moments of inertia that are involved in this, there's uh, one of these L1s for the torso, the rotation around the vertical axis. There's also a similar one for the legs, which have some mass, although less L1 legs. And there's the two twists that are required to keep things in the right orientations. There's L2 for the torso, which is around an axis that's parallel to the long axis of the torso. And there's an L2 for the legs around an axis that's parallel to the long axis of the legs. And so if you add up all of those angular momentum vectors, you can see that they don't add to zero. So if you sum all the vectors, there's still a piece left. So what's left, what has to be there to have angular momentum conserved, you start out with zero angular momentum, you must retain zero angular momentum, is the blue arrow, which I label LN, net angular momentum. And that part leads to net rotation. It's equivalent to a twisting of the body clockwise as viewed from above. And it only happens while you're hula hooping. It's not a change in angular momentum. It's just a change in orientation. And it depends on the various moments of inertia and the details of the geometry, the angles of the torso and the legs as you're doing the hula hoop motion. And so I wanted to look at this a bit more quantitatively. And so I came up with a very simple model. So I'm thinking of the torso and the legs each as a thin plate, as you can indicate it down here on the bottom left. And I give them each masses, slightly higher mass for the torso, slightly lower mass for the legs. Uh, heights, lengths, slightly shorter for the torso, slightly longer for the legs and widths, slightly wider for the torso, slightly narrower for the legs. And on the right here, I have the various angular momenta. I'm not going to go through all the math, but you can compute the moment of inertia of each of these thin plates, the corresponding angular momentum. And then you can figure out the ratio between the angle of the hula hoop twist, which I label omega, and the resulting net rotation angle, net flipping angle, which I label omega n. It's some ratio of these various moments of inertia and angular momenta and so on. And so if you assume that the legs and the torso are each bent by about 9 degrees from the vertical, so it's not a very deep bend of the body, a 360 degree hula hoop, so swinging your hips all the way around, leads to a hun about 180 degree flip. And if you bend more, that much hula hooping will lead, lead to an additional flip, or alternately less of a hula hoop will lead to a 180 degree flip. And so by just bending your body a little and doing a hula hoop motion, you can get a flip. That's certainly what cats do, and I believe that's also what flyers do when they're doing a miss. If you go to the video, you see that the astronaut rotated, but that motion seems much less efficient than a miss. On the other hand, cats do this hula hoop motion, but they're much more flexible than people. So the first question you might have is whether or not these are equivalents, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to think about this in the right way. And I think the answer is yes, because in the frame of reference where the torso is fixed, both of them are just waving something around. In the case of the arm waving motion, that's basically waving one arm or maybe both arms. In the hula hoop motion, it's basically waving both legs together. And in Rex's slow motion miss, uh, maybe it's just rotating one of her legs. And cat-like flexibility is not necessary to be able to reproduce this. For my simple model, it looks like a small bend about 18 degrees is enough to get you a 180 degree flip from a one round of the hula hoop. For future work, it would be nice to have more good slow motion video of different people doing a miss because different people have somewhat different looking technique. It would also be nice to have a more fully articulated computational or numerical model. You know, something along the lines of what I showed in the earlier videos for the swinging, but now with all of the different parts of the body and the different uh, joints acting as hinges. 
And there was a tool called, called Bullet Physics, which I've played with, which looks like it might be a good tool for that, but I don't actually have that yet. Hopefully I've shown you a third example of how flying trapeze is an interesting as a system to understand through physics, but you should definitely remember that it's also fun and maybe not as hard as you might think, so you should go ahead and try it. I want to acknowledge the large number of people who helped me think about and put together these videos. The TSNYDC staff who taught me what little I know about flying trapeze, and in particular for this part Laura and Rex who let me film their misses. And Irulina who gave a very nice talk at APS about demonstrating some of these rotation effects a few years ago, but also for further help helpful discussions over the last few weeks. The Stack Exchange page on how astronauts turn in place. And Karen Ross for help with the screen capture software and the Caltech Alumni Association for encouraging me to put this video together. Now on the bottom I have links to some interesting videos and uh, other web pages. The first one is a copy of Andy Rowena's talk starting around 23 minutes is where he talks about the rotation stuff that was relevant to what I talked about uh, today, although the first half is also very interesting. The Stack Exchange page that I mentioned right here, and also the Wikipedia page about the cat riding reflex, which has some interesting things, but also, in my opinion, some misleading animations. But it's still interesting. 